Welcome back, everyone, to the Stoey Geek Show. This is an empty bottle of tequila. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Just to kind of give you a preview as to how this segment will go, uh, Pedro is here and has fed us uh, lots and lots of tequila and lots of lots of knowledge oh, about of tequila. Knowledge. Joe, I'm going to top you off there because this... It, this right, tequila, over. this was the third, so Pedro, for our listeners, this was the third bottle in our list, I think represents the only empty bottle that we have, because it was the highest end one. So far. So far <laughs> yeah. in our list. So Unless far. you've got something else under your seat over there you want to share with us. I do. I do have some stuff under our seats, but um, actually, I, I, the focus has to be cigars. So let's, let's no, go I with that. No, I thought this focus was tequila. <laughs> No, that was the other segment. That was the previous segment. Oh, okay. So that's that's actually how we ended up uh, uh, celebrating some birthdays, uh, celebrating the whole hacker mentality and the hacker culture. Uh, but it's 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 all around cigars. And I'm glad to see that you have a cigar in your hand. In I this do. Segment. I do. We got Pedro. See, Pedro got us drinking tequila. We got Pedro smoking cigars. Yes. He was smoking a Baccarat cigar, which I thought was a great introduction to For cigars, sure. right? It's got a sweet cap on it. It's a very mild cigar. Yes. That box I got is very sweet. Is, is really good. Yes. Yeah, it's very got sweetness sweet. to it. Yeah. Yep. So, For sure. very nice introduction. Thank you. Yep. For you Stogie Geeks listeners at home and you want to follow along with the show notes, we are no longer using the wiki page. If you go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 283. That is the show notes of the Cigars of Love the it. Week and Pedro's bio as well. Um, that's how we are going to do the format from now on. And, so, and Russ is on the lines with us via Skype from Naples, Florida. Russ, welcome. What's going on, everybody? How you been? Russ, we're, how well, are you? I mean, we've we're been talking patiently about you. waiting, Russ. <laughs> we've been talking about you all week. Dude, we're, we're doing fantastic <laughs> right now because we just did a tequila segment. But how are you doing? And more importantly, what are you smoking? Well, actually, I got my hands on finally CLE Connecticut. Very nice. nice. Okay. Full pack, nice draw. So I'm excited. All the new sticks coming back from Las Vegas down here. Yeah. Um, as many of our listeners know, I'm a huge fan of the Connecticut cigars. That's what Pedro's smoking. Um, I've got a couple of different ones that I bought recently, Joe. That And I think Aaron, too, that we've been smoking uh, this week. Some great cigars this week. A deviation from uh, the Connecticut is the Cuban cigar that we're smoking, which is one of my favorite Cuban cigars of all time. Aaron, you're not from the United States. <laughs> uh, Ireland and the UK kind of thrown in the mix, as we discussed previously. But I love this uh, cigar right here. I don't know if we can kind of zoom in on the box. Um, and this, this box does not have much age. This is the saying, Cristobal de la Habana, La Punta. Mm. Which is very, that's the point. Yes. The point. Because it's a torpedo, which is why they call it the, the La Punta, because it comes to a point at the head of the cigar. Uh, la Punta is very different meaning. Very, very different. I, yeah. I, I realize that it's very important to fully uh, enunciate Spanish words. And I learned that not just in this case, but also with Añejo versus, or no, no, I'm sorry, Años versus Años, right? Which is oh yeah, that ten is year critical. anniversary versus your anus. Yes, <laughs> yes. very, yes. very critical. Ah. Yes, it's very, very important. These subtle very differences, critical. yeah, Aaron, especially if you're difference. getting a point in your anus, it's going to yeah, be a problem. Because you don't want to <laughs> smoke the hundred year anniversary of your asshole, right? <laughs> like that's not which which I don't think my asshole will last that long being out here <laughs> in Rhode Island. Well, some some cigars will actually give you. That experience versus Pucker, the yeah. other one. Ah. Well, yeah, because they could Puckery taste like it, one it, they could taste like it came from your uh, yes. uh, anos versus your yeah. anos. Back <laughs> probably find that seaweed will cool down your bum hole if you need that. The, dude, I'm telling you, straight the from the seaweed sea. thing. We're we yes, um, I'm investing. Um, so we're smoking the uh, 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 San Cristobal de la Habana La Punta. Um, and it is a Torpedo uh, Cuban Puro, one of my favorite Cuban cigars. And this box date, I'm, I'm looking at it, February 2017, uh, so not a whole lot of age, but still I find a very flavorful, awesome smoking experience. Aaron, you've smoked several 
Cuban cigars, as that is the majority of the market, I think, uh, outside the yeah, U.S., Yeah, the majority of the Europe. market that I've been exposed to. Yeah, yeah. in the U.K. especially. Yeah. Have you smoked this cigar before? No, I've never smoked this one before. And what is your assessment so far? Um, it's wonderfully smooth. It, it's got a lovely wrapper. It's got a really lovely silky feel to it. And it, it, it's it got a really lovely draw on it. And um, it, it seems to have a nice ash. And the, the taste and... Um, it it's sort of hitting sort of um, lots of notes on my nose, and it's like yeah, um, the retro hail is awesome. Yeah, on this cigar. I, getting yeah. a real retro hail. I didn't know that term, but um, I guess. But it it's a beautiful. Essentially, cigar. Aaron, that's when you blow the smoke through your nose. I tend to blow it out my mouth and suck it back up my nose. Is and, that the same? You know, it is a thing, and certainly that's the the way most people. So we've had this conversation several times on on so geeks. You. I think it's uh, a lot of the flavor, just smoking it and blowing it out through your mouth. However, when you retrohale it, there are receptors in your nasal cavity mm -hmm. that are more sensitive and allow you to experience a lot more flavors. Now, Russ, you've been in cigars for a long time, right? And I believe you work at a retail shop today. You've probably had this conversation with many of your customers about how you retrohale and the difference between not retrohaling and retrohaling, correct? Exactly. When it comes to the retrohale, first I'm going to really just see how much smoke is coming off the cigar first. But just the amount and the taste that you want to get out of it. So with retrohaling, it all depends if it's got a great draw, how you're cutting it. But you really want to get some taste and some full flavors and just the overall experience. So everybody as its own person should either try the retrohale or not. I, yeah, and I agree mm. with Russ. You, you should definitely try the retrohale. Uh, also, to Russ, Russ's point, you don't want to necessarily, when you first light up the cigar, take the first puff and retrohale the entire amount of smoke that you get from that first puff. And I think what Russ is describing is you kind of want to like not retrohale it first, kind of gauge where it is on the, the level of intensity maybe smoke it a little bit before you start to retrohale it. And when you do retrohale it, take a puff. Don't retrohale the entire thing. Maybe blow some out of your mouth yeah. first and then take the rest and retrohale yeah. it or do the opposite, retrohale a little bit first and then blow the rest yeah. out through your mouth to kind of... It's kind of like a conditioning thing. I mean, yeah. Joe, you're into yeah, boxing, right? Like it's naturally. kind of like a conditioning thing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And then also what, what, what I find out is depending on... Where you are, like right now, we have been sipping tequila for two hours and thirty-eight minutes. No. So the more no, it hasn't been two hours and thirty-eight minutes. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, the uh, two hours and eighteen. Right, um, I'm off. But like the more I retrohale this San Cristobal Cuban cigar and have this, it's like you kind of it brings back some of the the nuances of whatever's on your palate as well. You know? Yeah, and I guess a lot of the taste comes so from your good. nose as well. Yeah, sort of so good. An extra sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what I like about the retrohale is a lot of people say, well, I never retrohale. So, well, you can retrohale a little bit. You can take a little bit, and you don't have to blow out just a little bit. And then, again, like Paul says, you condition yourself to, to accept the whole retro. Yeah, I think there's something on a trumpet where you circular inhale and mm. stuff like that. So, I'm sure a few of you have. And, that, and then there's also. <laughs> And then there's also I I got it. And then, and then there's also a cadence. There's a cadence to retrohaling as well. Russ, we're staying focused. What have you been smoking? All right, first one by Robert Caldwell was "Long Live the King." Had that in a Toro size. It's also available in the Churchill and Robusto. Hey, Russ, is, is that a is that a Connecticut cigar from him? The "Long Live the King" is that his Connecticut line? No, uh, the wrapper is actually a Carollo. Mm. With the binder Dominican filler is both Dominican and Nicaraguan, so you're going to get a little bit more pepper, a little bit more bolder taste sure. to it, mm -hmm. and then some hints of earth, like a little bit of honey. So I actually ended up pairing that with a wild turkey straight. Not really. And I got yeah. a bunch mm. of flavor off of that thing. Overall, I got to give that a box split, but it's definitely something that dances around and is on his boulder side in his line, unlike the Blind Man's Bluff. The Blind Man's Bluff, is that that's his Connecticut, correct? Yes. Gotcha. Yep. 
He also has a blind man's bluff that's not a Connecticut. I, I feel like those lines are kind of like hover between a fiver and a box split, and I think Russ is kind of spot on with, uh, with yeah. your recommendation, Russ. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I like the Maduro uh, of the blind man's bluff. The long the um, blind man's bluff Connecticut. It's a fiver for sure. You know, but long live the king. It's a little. It's a little bit. I don't want to say it's better tobacco. To me, it comes across a little bit more smoother. I want to talk about uh, Aaron and Joe's trip to the Davidoff retailer in Rhode Island because there was uh, I've never there seen was so one particular Davidoff. cigar. Now I gave Joe a budget to go to this particular shop, Russ. I did. I gave him a budget. It was a pretty. I thought it was a pretty generous budget, Russ. And there are certain Davidoff uh, retailers here in Rhode Island, so I gave him a generous budget, and I'm like, bring us back some stuff. And like he true pirate back. form, <laughs> true pirate form, he comes back and I take one look at his face and I'm like, he's like, so we need to talk. I'm like, you totally blew the budget, didn't you? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, let me get through what I bought first before we have that conversation about budget. And I'm like, all right, fair enough, fair enough. And Joe proceeds to lead in with like the crown jewels and he's like, so... And in Joe's typical training here in Security Weekly, we talk about communication, communicating value. Joe led in with, I bought you a box of 2016 Davidoff Art Edition. And I'm like, yeah, throw the budget out the window. Like, budget does not matter anymore. <laughs> Joe totally socially engineered me. And I'm like, it's good stuff. everything it, he yeah. said after that is kind of a blur. And I was pretty much like opening the box, taking the cellophane off of the cigars and sniffing them, shoving them up my nose. And then after he finished, he was like, so I spent this much. I'm like, uh, whatever. And went back and lit one of the cigars and smoked it. And it was awesome. So, yes. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, you know, it's better to uh, ask for forgiveness. Thank you. Yeah. Then, then seek permission. Right? Joe knows the way to my heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a guy. Yeah. So about your budget, I bought you a box of 2016 Davidoff Art Edition. I'm like, why? What are we talking about budget for? <laughs> like, what is <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, we got it. We got a good deal on those. But uh, you've had a chance to smoke them. I did. I sm smoked them maybe. Two of them? Really? <laughs> Only two. Yeah. Are those not in the, the F off section or no? Uh, they will be shortly after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to so, commandeer that shit quick. <laughs> yeah, we, I can go now for you. <laughs> it's that white box right above oh, your I shoulder, know. Pedro. Oh, I know. Right there. They are, uh, I would they're say. Chef Dom. Well, yeah. they're kind of similar to like. Um, they're similar in size to a Fuente, like a BBMF or a Hemingway series, mm -hmm. the way they do their Perfecto. So it comes to a nipple. I'm just, I can't say why did you look at me when you said <laughs> Aaron, nipple? Stop. I don't know it's why. like, is it because I've got three and you've been like trying to um, see the third one? No. <laughs> Go, keep going. <laughs> you can do this, Paul. The same Hemingway kind of style size of cigar where it comes to that nipple is very much apparent on this 2016 art edition however the flavor profile is completely different it is an herbally it has that herbal component and some people liken this to like oh i feel like i'm smoking grass clippings like in it's back to our previous conversation about different spirits different yep. ty types of tequila different types of cigars different types of food right like you have to learn I think learn to appreciate different flavor profiles and sometimes deviate from what you normally like to something that has an herbal profile. But what's much and better? And is different and, and not necessarily extremely bad or extremely good, but oh, okay, that's different. It may not be for everyone. However, when I first started smoking cigars from Davidoff and Zeno mm -hmm. um, and typically in that entire Davidoff portfolio you find things that have like an herbally or grassy component to it and this one did however there's a, a delineation that i make in my mind when i smoke cigars that have this profile there's the like really grassy like overly grassy component and then there's the it has a little bit of that kind of grass clipping herbally flavor but it's a part of the overall experience, right? And I've learned to kind of 
uh, differentiate the two. Like, I think it was awful. Hold on. What's someone? All right, we got some static. All I right. think he's Ru- cutting his lawn just uh, so he can Russ get is that in Florida. grass. Uh, he, yeah, he wants that grass feeling. He does. He does. Uh, so, like, the awful domain for me had that, like, overly grassy flavor. However, when I transitioned to some of the Xeno line and some of the, or the Davidoff line, I'm like, I pick up on that, uh, that grassy flavor, but it's not overpowering. It's a component of the overall flavor experience. Dude, that's what that cigar did for me. Now, also, I will state that when you first smoke one of the cigars that are in that profile and they're really kind of young, they, they haven't been aged very long, you get a very heavy grassy flavor from it. When I do that, I put it down for a year or two or more, and I go back to it, you can get some of those more flavors. Like that grassiness more tends mature. to age out a little bit yeah. when you age it. Now, since this was two years old, that grassy flavor had aged out a little bit, mm-hmm. and the art edition tends to be a little higher in the, the strength profile. This cigar was spot on, dude. I would call it box-worthy for sure. I mean, te- it's teetering on the fight Chuck Norris. Mm-hmm. Teetering. Wow. Like, it's yeah. close. Wow. It's yeah. pretty close. Yeah, and how that came to us is we were doing a roundabout in the humidor, and I said, let's talk about the aging room. I was like, we want something really different. And he's like... And by aging room, not the brand, aging room. Like, no, aging room. They've got the, like, the humidor that everyone walks into, and then in the lounge, they've got the vintage... Yeah, they only yeah, break it, it open that, twice a yeah, month, I, was, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was going there. They actually have an aging room that's only open like twice a month for consumers. They're really stingy about stuff. it. They're, they're very yeah. stingy. And I gave the whole... My boy came from Ireland... And he's only here for a couple of weeks. And you're like, my other boy is the found, one of the founders of Stogie Geek. <laughs> and we're going to spend some money, so can and we get into the agent room? It's Ty- funny how that works. And Tyler that listens to the show knows that because yeah. he listens to the show. And Tyler, guy, great guy. I tell you what, uh, if you're in Rhode Island and you're visiting cigar shops, you got to visit uh, Regency where Tyler works. There's many other shops, Joyles. There's Havana Club next door. Um those are the first three that come off the top yeah, of my you head. Should check out his you website. have to, yeah, you have <laughs> to visit them uh, for sure if you're in Rhode Island and you're a cigar geek for yeah. sure. And Tyler's Tyler's the man. He's awesome. Yeah, I've yeah, absolutely. I've had very similar conversations with Tyler over the years, uh, and I like him as a person. Yeah, and I, I like what Regency has done. They took over. It was a uh, a laundromat mm-hmm. next door to yes. Regency that they took over and converted into a really high end bar. They've got the vintage room in there and in a beautiful, beautiful lounge. Beautiful. So that I mean, yep. and that's a risky endeavor mm-hmm. uh, as a business owner. And I respect them for they for do pulling great it off. coffee yeah. as well. Surprise. Oh yeah, coffee. Aaron had his first yeah. nitro coffee. Yeah, yeah. Joe came and Aaron came back with coffee. So I'm like, <laughs> the fuck is my coffee? It like, wouldn't. Have, it on? wouldn't have made the trip. It, it wouldn't have made the nah, trip. Made it's it. like Guinness. It doesn't like to travel. Yeah, oh, that's, sure. That's you're talking out your it's ass. It's a long now. way away. So no, no. You, so you would I, give I, it a, a, a box worthy. F- almost. It's a box worthy, very much on the cusp of almost fight Chuck Norris mm-hmm. is where I would rate that. Yeah, that's awesome. And I actually agree with that. There, there's certain levels of um, product that you actually want to let them sit. When all of the and ice melts into the iced coffee, I get it. It's not the same. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not the same, but it's that's the experience you want to have. You don't necessarily want to have the the fresh press is off the uh, it's it's off the charts when it's actually rested, mm. right? Just pretty much like we had the tequila, it's, right? It, it's it just it comes out, um, but it's not necessarily ready for the full experience until it's actually settled. We had a lot of tequila, <laughs> too. It feels good. I feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel happy. Uh, transitioning from that, I had the CAO Flathead Spock Plug 450. Now, the size of this uh, particular stick is 4.5 by 50. The wrapper is a Connecticut Broadleaf. The binder is an Ecuadorian Connecticut. The filler is Nicaraguan. Um, what's interesting about this is they actually uh, tailor all of the different sizes. It's available in five different sizes: spark plug, piston, camshaft, carb, and big block. Right? The big block being a 
uh, seven 60? by no seven by seventy. Ooh, wow, the Cobb wow. is a six by sixty, and then camshaft etc. is is five and a half by fifty four. Piston is six and a half by forty two. I had the spark plug, so I would similar. So it's the smallest of of that size, which is four and a half by fifty. On a scale of complexity, flavor, and balance, from a scale of one to ten, complexity I gave it a seven. Flavor I gave it an eight. Balance I gave it a seven. Um, excellent presentation of these sticks. CAO uh, came out of the gate 2008, 9, 10, extremely strong. Um, and you know, but the marketing has kind of beefed up a little bit. That being said, I gave the sticks of uh, the uh, stick of fiver. It, it's good. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely good. I think Will reviewed some of these cigars too and said they were pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I had a tough time getting over the marketing. <laughs> For this day, sure. See, see, I, I kind of like give it, give the marketing a chance, right? As a marketing quasi sales guy, you know, I, I kind of give it a chance, you know. But I get it um, from a shelf presentation. You know, you're like, oh wow, you know, like it's different. You know, it's not like a regular wrapper and a cellophane. Comes in its own individual box, like if you were to buy a spark plug or a piston or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that viaje tatuaje thing going on. Sometimes you got some marketing. Within the background, but I gave it a fiver. It's it's a good stick. It doesn't break the bank at all. You know, you, you're in that seven, eight, nine dollar price range, so That's it's not very too bad. reasonable. Yeah, so it's not too bad um, there. But yeah, that was the CAO Flathead Spark Plug four fifty. Hmm. So what does Russ drink? What does Russ guys? drink? You drink <laughs> the <tequila? laughs> No, I, that's a valid question. Yeah, yeah. that's a valid question. <laughs> <clears throat> Russ, what do you drink? Did you hear that? What am I drinking? Guys? Cuba Libre. Of course. What else would you drink but free Cuba with your cigars? <laughs> what is Cuba Libre? What is that? Free Cuba. Yeah, I'm. Uh, but is it a tequila? Is it? No, it's actually a cocktail. Russ, okay. how do you make it? Rum, Coke, twist of lime. <laughs> there you go. That's He's it. an honest man. What we a, call that a rum and coke, though, no? Yeah, but it, it's, it's, there, the there's a lot more passion to that. Because uh, of the I lime? Mean, it, it's a lime breed passion? No, the rum does. When you stick it in your eye. The, the rum does. <laughs> what, what kind of rum are you using? Sailor Jerry, I need that extra 2%. Oh, that's very really sweet. That what is that? very sweet. Mm. So it, 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 it's all of these things, uh, right? The, the, the cigars have a passion to them, right? Um, there, there's a flavor that, that... Is there a passion behind Coca-Cola? Not, not Coke. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you, you can be dissident and um, have Pepsi. No, no, no. Are you in a ball busting mood today? Never, never, <laughs> never a Pepsi. I, I kind of just transitioned but, into that ball busting mood. But Joe, in case you hadn't Pepsi, Pepsi, Pepsi with uh, regular sugar and Pepsi with sugar cane is very different. So right? Coca-Cola, but I'm kind of... Wax poetic here for a second. Hold on, Russ. We'll get to it. I had a couple of cases of soda come through my house, and it was the like green and red Coca Cola cans. Oh yeah. That are like it's not high fructose corn syrup; it's natural cane sugar. Sugar it cane. It does yes. taste different. Yes. And my 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 kids like sneak it all the time. Like they like totally, it. Oh, they love it. They they're totally like breaking into the pantry and rummaging through wow. the garage to find it and drinking it and then acting crazy because it's still sugar. But it's natural cane sugar, Yes. which to me, so I tried one, it tastes way better, I think, than a regular Coke. It tastes yeah. more natural to me, not as artificial. Yes. And I can see it working much better in cocktails, including Long Island iced tea. I like Long, a Long Island, Island iced tea, iced tea. dude, I with like this like more tea. natural Coca-Cola. I'm totally digging it. it I'm not it, trying it's that. A- absolutely. So hats off to Russ for actually using uh, sugar cane. It, there, there's a passion that goes into everything uh, Latinos make, right? Um, Coke is better like with cocaine? sugar cane. Are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, originally, <laughs> originally, originally, Coke was yes. cocaine, and yes. and actually, it, yeah, it, it was, was actually uh, literally uh, cocaine. Dude. Wow, yeah. Peru that introduced Before us to that. Before they classified it as a Schedule One substance, yes, like soda, 
Yeah. Like the reason they call it Coke, it had cocaine? Yeah, n- not to mention, uh, Russ, I mean, do you go as far as picking your limes? Are they regular limes? Are they key limes? Are they the smaller? I'm going regular limes, cut them up, make sure they're real juicy. I guess organic if you really want to get healthy with it. But uh, my Coca-Cola's actually come from a little guy in town that has them from the glass bottles, like those originals that yeah. you get in Puerto Rico See? and Cuba sure. that had that authentic taste that we all remember before they changed the formula. Yeah, no, it's yeah. true. Yeah, there's a whole experience. It's like, would you, would you actually want a cigar that has um, leaves from different countries or do you actually want it to go with somebody that wakes up every day and it's dedicated the to passion. the production? Yes, the there's a passion. And it's like you can actually have, for example, a pizza, right? From I hope um, I hope Sam ordered some pizzas because we're gonna need them after <laughs> the show. I'm just saying. <laughs> Aaron, you're see, gonna take something. You're making, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're making me hungry, Pedro. I, I've hit a cup I've actually I've actually, actually watched a show and in and, and, and many times. And the secret ingredient to some of these things is love. There's actually and and it it sounds trite, but. Coke with sugar cane is not the same as Coke with beet sugar or with anything else. High fructose corn syrup. Awful. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and and um, Coke with sugar cane and rum that is made with a passion with a cigar that is actually made with... I mean, this is, this is the yeah. product no, of a totally farmer. I totally see it working with a nice rum with the... Like more like organic sugars that make the yes. coke and a lime pairing better because it doesn't have that like artificial flavor to it when I when I drink yeah. the, the soda. We have actually one time in the past of Stu Geek's history did a pairing segment on soda and was about like boutique sodas that aren't mass manufacturing it with high fructose corn syrup, like actually making a soda with the consumer in mind that is conscious of the taste and flavor experience of that and pairing that with cigar so um i I know many cigar smokers that like to pair their cigars with a a rum and coke yeah and i think it's a better experience if you're adding that nice lime component to it with uh, a soda that's not using artificial flavoring that's using natural flavoring with a nice with a nice it doesn't have to be a high-end rum but it's certainly not (laughs) correct it's not a Bacardi, and you're sitting from right. Puerto Rico, no, right? No, like it's not a Bacardi rum, like a nice dark rum that's not too high-end that you would sip on your own, but a rum that you would use in a mixture. I like the nicer, higher-end dark rums that I use in my mojitos and my other mixed drinks uh, that I think have a much better flavor profile to them. I'm going to try that when I go back to the UK because we have like your regular normal Coke, and we have your light diet Coke. And recently on the market, I say mm-hmm. recently, maybe the last year or two, there's been this green Coke. Yeah, it's the green. Yeah, right, the green. But yeah. I didn't see where it fit it in the market mm-hmm. because it in the in the UK it seems to be marketed as it's healthier, but it's not quite diet, so it is more flavor, but it's not yeah, no, quite the full bodied. It, it just it tastes more natural. But it just right? uh, it just didn't yeah. seem to have like a market place in the yeah. UK. So. I think I can bring that back to the UK, and um, I'm going to try that. I'm going to tell all my friends about it if I think it's good, because I seen that. The and entire it, country now is going to be drinking green, yeah, Coke. naturally flavored yeah. Coke just because of Aaron. Yeah, well, the, trendsetter. There, there yeah. was there was a black market for bottled Mexican Coke, um, because it, Coca Cola. Does it use? <laughs> but does it use more natural flavoring? No, than no, strictly use, strictly sugar cane. That was it. Sugar cane. Yes. Not so, artificial so, flavoring, which is like high fruit, fructose corn syrup. Right. Yeah. Fl- okay. It's not that it's artificial. It's still natural, but it's not it's, corn. It's, yeah. Right? It's, so there, there is a different experience. And when you when you this first designed the drink, right, originally, um, before Coke was actually classified as illegal, um, it was sugar cane. It was whatever the secret formula, formula is mm-hmm. and sugar cane. Uh, uh, and the coca leaf it, it, and coke and coke Co- uh, coca, coca leaf, leaf. cocaine cocaine coca- and, mm-hmm. that, and that um, was just the coca leaf uh, uh, yes from Peru yeah uh, which they use as a stimulant so um, Russ uh, brings up a, a, a good point is it, it, it's not that you're going to sit there and you're going to um, cater to green coke drinkers right green coca cola drinkers is that 
there is a different experience that goes with this particular drink. It's the same thing with cigars, right? It's You can actually go to a garage and pick up a cigar. But why, if you're actually going to, if you actually like these things, why wouldn't you go to a specialist shop, right, mm-hmm. that has a humidor, that has um, a different flavor profile than everything else that you've actually, you know, come to like? Well, in cigars, I, I think it's really different. And, you know, Russ, I'm sure you see your fair share of cigar rollers in Naples, Florida, right? And my, oh, yeah, we've got everybody. They've been doing them out of tobacco sh- uh, taco shops, so all right? this is never shortage. <laughs> I'm sure that's pretty popular in Florida, like Naples and Tampa yep. and Miami. My assessment of, and, and a lot of my cigar friends are like kind of like pseudo cigar friends that smoke every once in a while are like, oh, yeah, like I, I, <laughs> I went to this event or Paul come to me to this event because there's going to be a cigar roller there. I'm very skeptical of that because the cigar roller has to source tobacco from somewhere. And they're typically an individual that is sourcing tobacco for themselves versus mm-hmm. a huge company that's sourcing tobacco from a much larger company. The, much, the largest companies source some of the best tobacco because they've been doing it for years. Mm-hmm. It goes right back to our conversation about tequila, right? Yep. The larger companies can have the large farms where it takes eight years to grow. So like it's eight yep. years before you can even start. They've been in business so long and they're such a large company. They've got a huge feel, field of blue agave, right? The same thing happens in tobacco. The Padrones, the Placencia, the Fuentes, the, the list goes on, Davidoff, right? of these large companies that are grow- have been growing tobacco for centuries and they can produce the best of the best. Now, when let's say I want to be a cigar roller, I go to not even the Padrones or Placencias of the world. I go to the second tier and I say, I want to buy some tobacco to roll for my cigar rolling events. I'm getting not first tier, not second tier. I'm getting like third, fourth, fifth, sixth tier tobacco to go roll my own cigars because that's what they have available in the humor because the first tier they're using to make what is Padron. The second tier is probably what they're selling to other people to incorporate in their cigars. The third, fourth, and everything after that is maybe what they're selling to Paul and Aaron want to have a cigar. Paul and Joe want to have, Paul, you know, we want to have a cigar together. We call it the Stoic Geek Cigar because, you know, Russ and everyone, we developed it on this show. We're getting like fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh tier tobacco that's been sitting around. That's kind of my kind assessment. Of, kind could, of. It could be. Now, it could be that we're, uh, you know, kind of large enough where we can go find different tobaccos from a large manufacturer. They're like, yeah, we got this one sitting on the shelf and that one sitting on the shelf. And they're pretty high tier, but we don't have enough of it to like make a production cigar. Yeah. You could get lucky. And La Aurora and others have done this certainly in the past and go, we, we can make a cigar for you and it's of really high quality. And oh, by the way, we're only going to get 500 to 1,000 boxes yeah. of it. And a certain percentage of those are actually really, really yep. good, right? But I feel like when you're an independent roller, you're getting a, a lower quality or lower tier of tobacco uh, to work with, which means when I go to a cigar event and you're rolling tobacco... It's probably really young. Probably needs to sit in my humidor for three years before it's ready to smoke. However, you're rolling it or have some pre-rolls that haven't been aged as long. And it's not, just not great. So I think there's a, 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 a differentiation between large companies that make tobacco for themselves, large companies that make tobaccos for smaller companies, what you can potentially source if you have enough influence in the industry to make a cigar for you versus what those cigar rollers are making to bring to the U.S. to go to different cities like Naples or Rhode Island or wherever where we're having a wedding, I'm getting married, I want to have a cigar roller. Like, I'm just like, that quality of tobacco has never been there when I've gone to someone else's wedding. I mean, like, dude, that's awesome. You got a cigar roller there, but there's a caveat associated with that in my mind. Yeah. Mm. I I, I mean, it's, it it really depends what, you're actually going for are you going for a consistent experience mm-hmm. or are you going for a once in a lifetime right if you're going for a once in a lifetime and you're willing to 
uh, gamble on a mediocre cigar. It's like, hey, you know, you smoked. That was great. That, that was a great wedding. Um, but if you actually have something that is rolled and it is this premium tobacco that just happened to be produced this one year. You got um, that relationship with the company that's making it. Right. And not even that. They may have a relationship with another company that they source tobacco with that they're like, we didn't end up using in our production lines. And um, I, I, what is it? The the EXO. What is that? Um, Enrique Sanchez. Yeah. Right? 1502. 1502. Yep. Right? Like he's been able to source some really awesome. T- that's kind of the one of the use cases I use, that 1502 XO fantastic cigar he was able to find the right combination of tobaccos from other manufacturers in combination with it to make a like a really great cigar but at the right so time you, yeah but it is so i guess my point is it's not a binary thing right like yes. the smaller players do find some really great tobaccos right and the larger players do and there's everyone in between i think the majority of the time when you're an independent roller you're mostly working with lower grade, lower tier uh, tobacco to make those cigars. And then from there, there's a whole tier system, right? It's interesting how it relates to security, right? Like we would just, yeah. if you, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron and, and Pedro, if you listen to uh, Security Weekly, right? We were talking yes. about defining the Thank different you. tiers of where am I in my security architecture, right? It's like, where am I in my cigar blending architecture right it really comes down to tiers and that's not to say that a lower tier tobacco from a roller is necessarily bad maybe it's not keeping pace with the market today but it's a pretty good cigar for what you're paying for it and it's all about value you know i've had conversations with rollers at events where i'm like like dude like okay you got a cigar i'm like i want to buy five and by the way i want you to roll it in a certain way i want you to leave like a foot at the end and then I know I'm going to age that for one to two to three years in my humor before I smoke it. And, oh, by the way, the cigars are only $4 a piece. I smoke those on my way to work. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? For the whole experience that I pr- produce for that, it's a good cigar. Are they machine rolling them or are they hand rolling them? They're hand rolling them at the vents. Wow, yeah, that's hand really exciting. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Really machine rolled cigars are a totally different aspect of the industry. And we've, we've done some segments on those. Um I think uh, machine roll is kind of a different aspect. I think that um, there are some short filler cigars that are hand rolled, right? Like when we we get short filler cigars, mm-hmm. largely those are hand rolled, not machine rolled. Yeah, like, like for example, working, the Argyle. Like the, the Argyle is is short filler. Sure, and there's premium cigars that are hand rolled, and then there's kind of like bundle cigars that are long filler which is a whole market for that. and But then there are cigars that are hand-rolled but short filler, and then there are the machine-rolled cigars after that. Mm-hmm. And some of the, what's interesting, the Argyle, which, what, what Joe's mentioning, right? Those are short filler cigars. I believe they're hand-rolled from mm-hmm. my, my assessment and research. And if you get the right ones, you can get cigars for $2 a piece that are just, Aaron, I'll give you one. They're, I mean, they're, they're not awesome. out of this world. They're, That's no, an overstatement. F- for what you spend... Uh, for you, what you spend for two bucks a cigar, you're like, you're dude, like, this is a good cigar. You're wow. like, you know what? If I was in the car or fishing or working in the yeah. yard, like, or or even like I'm in here in the morning and I know I'm not necessarily focused on my cigar. I got a bunch of conference calls or I'm yeah, doing a yeah, show. Or like, busy. I'm not paying attention to it. Like, for two bucks, if, even if I smoke half of it and... I move on to something else after that. Like two bucks is totally worth it. So I think you got to, as a cigar smoker, you you can't just have one profile, right? You got to have profiles where you're like, I'm going to buy this bundle. It's 50 bucks for 25 cigars. They're two bucks a piece. I can smoke one myself. I can get some enjoyment out of it. I can give it to my friends. If they smoke half of it and put it out, whatever. Yeah, you're not going to be sad. You're not going to be sad. It's not like that those 2016 Davidoff art editions worked out to at least $20 a piece, yes. right? Like you're not giving those out to, like to your friends or smoking those when you're not paying attention to, non, to it. To right? non-smokers, yeah. someone that yeah. wants to try one. It's something that we focused on here on the Stoic Geek Show to help you develop a profile for 
what cigar to smoke when and what cigars to share with other people. And I think what I'd like to speak about when I come back from Vegas is um, cigars. That Are you, you coming back here in the office after Vegas? Yeah, I'm coming back he's for, for six, seven show. days after the. After, okay, yeah. so you're here for another week. Yeah, after yeah. Vegas. Yep. And I'd like to talk about how do you, how do we get you back here after that? Aaron? Well, I'm Mark, one of the production guys, he said I can crash at his, and um, we can um, come visit in the spring at, at the very latest, anyway. But I would love to talk about in a later show about um, a cigar that you would be happy to go out and light again. Uh, between the difference between a cigar that you would only want to smoke straight through mm. and whether there's a difference in that because I, I'm scared to let a cigar go out. Lighting it again is dangerous. Um, go stale. It goes stale. So, uh, Russ, I want to make sure you're involved with this segment, right? Um, what is your experience with relighting a cigar? And I've heard multiple kind of facets on that. In other words, uh, Manuel and Noah, actually. Master Belinda for Aurora said, it's more about where you cut it, the part that's going in your mouth and the saliva that's getting on it. If you let that sit for more than an hour, after that, it turns it sour, right? And then there's other segments we've run and we've talked to master blenders where we're like, if it goes out, you kind of knock the ash off, you light it again. Instead of sucking the cigar smoke in, you blow it out and blow out some of the kind of like junk that's and associated with it. you get the, ta- it. the tar buildup at the end as and well. And you kind of blow, blow out that tar buildup. So what's been your experience with like relighting cigars? The tar blowout is something I've experienced in one certain brand. I won't say their name, but they're mainly bought online. Mm-hmm. If it's not going to be a good taste after a relight, do I even keep going with it? But what ends up happening is relight it, blow the smoke out because you don't want any of that ashy taste on your tongue. Sure. And then you also give it 30 seconds, give it a minute because you could have relit it in the middle of a transition and it's a totally different cigar. Mm -hmm. Really have to evaluate and check everything and make sure that it didn't plug up or anything like that. And to bring out the most flavor in like a Camacho bourbon barrel age and things like that, get it with a bourbon, dip it in, really oh. enjoy that experience that your mm. taste buds are really going to yeah. get from the tobacco I'm excited and the that drink. As well. About so, whether you should dip a cigar. I, I've, never been, I've never been a big fan of dipping the cigar in any kind of spirit. I think it's kind of like a... You're cheating. It it's must a, change it's the a whole hack. Pro- it's a hack. It changes right. the whole profile. Like you're getting some, You're getting whatever you're dipping and getting... True, true. However, if you can take a lower end cigar and say, look, I'm going to dip this in a fine cognac or something, not the foot, but the head, right? I'm going to dip the head in cognac. If that allows people who are not cigar smokers to enjoy that cigar, I'm kind of all for it, right? Or if you're taking a lower end cigar, like maybe you went to a cigar roller and you bought those cigars and you're like, those are pretty good. But you know what? This might be good to dip at the end in, in cognac. Like, Joe, you would do that for your friends, right? What? You dip, dip Have cigar? them dip the end of a, a lower-end cigar in cognac to get a better experience, right? Depends on what it was. You know, if they're dipping Davidoffs, I'm like, bro, just take it out of your mouth, throw it out. Like, a get that off my cigar, patio. Right? Which yeah. are, like the Tudor or <laughs> Argyle cigars, right? Yeah. If your friends were dipping the end in cognac, yeah. getting a better experience, you would do that. Yeah. I would do that. I would totally have Yeah. I'd sit there right with them doing it. I'd be like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to dip my end in the end. I'm going to play along. Yep. And it's totally fine, yeah. right? Your higher-end cigars... In my opinion, you shouldn't have to do that with. The flavor should come from the cigar itself. Similar to how we talked about uh, tequila, right? The flavor shouldn't come from the tequila. I shouldn't have to add anything to that. I don't have to make a margarita with my tequila to get the flavor out of it. We talked about tequilas that lend itself towards doing that, and they're much less expensive. So I think you, you have to balance all of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, if if you actually actually if you have to alter what the buildup is of the cigar, or what the sudden is like the person who created that spirit or that cigar, if you have to alter it, right? Then, then you're having something else. Yeah. So it's a cocktail. You're changing it. it. It's yeah, it, it's the the initial makeup was mediocre, mm-hmm. right? 
or if you're actually relighting is all of a sudden is oh it, it, you cut the experience midway or you the, the saliva altered the initial flavor profile all of a sudden you just cut it off right and and or get a new cigar period mm. it's if, if you actually need to alter the makeup of the of what you're enjoying is you gotta have something else mm -hmm. yeah russ what is the other sticks you've been smoking all right I was up in Cape Coral this week, mm. and this was called Parolis, and I'm like, Parolis? There gonna be convicts there? Yeah. I was skeptical, but went in, and it was actually Parolis, Cuban seed. Wrapper was actually a candy cane, so that's the name of the stick. Connecticut and Maduro, binder Nicaraguan, filler Nicaraguan, and I now have. A Hustler 724 by Kurt Kendall of the South. Mm. It was unbelievable. Now, there's a difference. It was medium, nice and mellow in the beginning. And then when the Robusto changed halfway through, it just got crazy pepper. I mean, like, it could have been cayenne. It really spiced it up. And I'm just like, this is so different. So Casey, the bar owner and distributor... He's starting to tell me the whole story behind every different stick. He's got one that's Anejo blended, but the candy cane is a rock star, and I gave it a box split because if my friends come to town, I want to rep this, and I want to put this in their mouth. It was fantastic. Um, that's awesome. Uh, so you say the candy cane, is that – it's like – Obviously, this is, and the Maduro as well. We talked about it previously. This is a, a cigar that has a sweetness. It, it's like... Yes. Can you tell me about the sweetness profiles and how sweet Wait, it actually is? Is that the uh, Barbara Pole wrapper, Russ? Yes, it is. Yeah. The Barbara Pole wrappers from uh, Kurt Kendall are just awesome. Like, I... <sighs> I, I don't rate them like a, a Chuck Norris or like an Oasis. However, like in a cigar, and Russ, you tell me if you agree, like a cigar that you can get at a reasonable price point that's smokable every day, they're probably like in the top like 10% of that. Like you can get a, a, a the Barber Pole wrapper, get a great experience at a reasonable price point without breaking the bank, without, you know, going to like a Davidoff or a, a Padron. But they're a great everyday smoking cigar, right? Yes, it is. Now, uh, getting to the notes of it, it was toasty. I mean, it could have been a little bit of almond, earth, and cedar. So, I mean, just for this to have like a little Connecticut wrapper, but to also have that sweetness that the Maduro brought along. And then midway through, they did some type of filler that was packed with pepper, and it totally changed the dynamic of the stick. It was dancing all over the place, but it really was smooth and mellow the whole way through with no problems with consistency and construction. And for five bucks, I said, why not give it a whirl? Mm -hmm. Now, Russ, I have a question about that cigar. Were you at a specific cigar bar for that up in uh, Cape Coral, Florida? And is that specific to that cigar shop or is that readily available down in your section? Because if you if you take the cigar company, which I did a little bit of research from when you sent me your stogies of the week, it seems to be like that seems to be the house cigar for that particular uh, cigar bar. Yes, it is their house stick. Mm -hmm. And they are going to be launching over the next four months throughout Florida. So I thought it was an interesting opportunity to get to know the people that are behind Corollas and then find out about their bar and how they have live music. It's called uh, Blue 32 Bar. Mm -hmm. And then they just branded it also with the Parolis brand to bring more traffic into it. Mm. They're up to a great start. Yeah. I want to know from the cigar industry, since next Tuesday we are traveling to Las Vegas to do a show, where is the best place maybe number two and number three on your list to smoke cigars in Las Vegas. 
email paul at stogiegeeks.com for that. I have to say from history, just a historical reference, the Casa Fuente is tops on my list. Like every time I go to Vegas, I have to make the trek to Casa Fuente. Aaron, we, I'm very much looking forward, and in, in, I'm a straight man, but I'm very much looking forward <laughs> to spending time with you uh, at Casa Fuente in Las Vegas, sharing cigars and fabulous tangerine mojitos oh wow that sounds amazing it's amazing it's, it is amazing you had to promise me joe well, you're having a baby which is way more exciting than what we're talking about yes but that aside aaron pedro you're going to be there too i'm going to be there oh that's exciting casa fuente sharing a cigar together with yeah let, mojitos. Me, buy, let me buy that one i'll buy I, that one. I, I have to say i formed and cultivated many relationships in the security industry by having cigars and mojitos at Casa Fuente. I, and I'm very much very looking exciting. forward to both of you coming out there sounds because it's, it's an amazing experience. I the tell first you what, cigars and the first rounds on me. Guaranteed. I tell you what, the, the cigars they have there are, are fantastic. And it's interesting that like, we can go there as cigar geeks, you know, Russ included, right? And find the most like rare freaking unicorn on the planet. And it's interesting how we can spend, like we could give them 75 to $90 or more of our money for a single cigar and be totally happy with that. And then buy like a $17 mojito and still be like, yeah, that was worth it. It was totally, or you can go get a mojito, which is still $17 and get, a low, kind of, you know, not as inexpensive cigar uh, and still have the same experience. That's what amazes me about Casa Fuente. They've gone through a lot of changes, you know, over the years, but I, I, th- I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm very excited. In a, in a great way. You excited? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it, it's, my question becomes, I, I'm, I don't necessarily smoke cigars on a regular basis. It's, would you rather have consistently good cigar or a one-off experience that changes your life both <laughs> next week you're going to be both. given that chance both next week you're going to you're going to be given that chance which one would you rather have both they, it's not an either or right like there are cigars that i smoke today i don't know why operations manager sam is crawling on the floor to get my signature on a particular check, which I'll give her and hand that back to her. Thanks, Sam. That was very good social engineering, uh, that was Sam. Awesome. <laughs> Best it's, social it, engineering. It is very I good that we're Pedro not. Had a great question though, and <laughs> it is: I have a stable of cigars that I like to smoke on a regular basis. That they, are good. That are very no, good. No, no. They give me great enjoyment, and they mm-hmm. set themselves apart from. 60% of the cigars in the market. Too, there we right? go. Like I'll smoke these, all the EP Carrillo New Wave Reserva in the Toro size and a couple others, which I'll talk about next. But, however, when I reach off into the F off section in the lower right-hand corner of my humidor, those are cigars that it's a very special experience to smoke, and I appreciate that, right? So do I. It, it, but it's yeah. totally like, came up with the sign. I'm the reason why he has the sign. <laughs> But I understand Back off that. my pork tenderloins, okay? <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. I will smoke my regular cigars. that, and, and so the tier before that is like I smoke everyone else's cigars before that. And, I'm, and it's mixed success. And I, may, and I do that on a regular basis to find what may be something that works its way into my regular rotation. E.P. Carrillo, New Wave Reserva, Toro. Uh, Connecticut, right? That's in my regular rotation. However, I smoke everyone else's cigar and I sample so that either it's something that is total crap or maybe it's something that works its way into my regular rotation or it's something that's limited that works its way into my holy crap, that's special yeah. section, right? So, so I think I know I the put, answer I, to this. That's it's how I like, put cigars. Um, 
So you have cigars that remind you of things that you've done in the past, and sure. you, you will save them as the unicorn cigar. Oh my god! Like you're like when I when you got married and um, you Dude, were on no, your no, honeymoon. No. Like and it's summertime. Yeah, Camacho Liberty. Camacho has put out a cigar every year called the Camacho Liberty, and I've smoked as many of those as I could get my hands on from very early on, which they actually mixed in Cuban tobacco. With non-Cuban tobacco to make those cigars. Yeah. Less and less every year. But like I'll smoke those on July 4th for that exact thing that you're describing, Aaron. It's a special occasion. I will smoke that cigar. Brings back memories. Sure. And there are regular production cigars that I buy at a regular clip that work its way. And then there are the special cigars. And those are still the one we talked about. The Davidoff Art Edition from 2016. That's a special cigar that I will smoke on special occasions and learn to appreciate. And that's kind of how I, I, I divide it, right? We have Russ on the line. Um, Russ, what, what would you actually uh, prefer to smoke? Uh, want a consistent cigar or something that Overall, is... Overall, you need to have consistency in your brand. Mm. I mean, we were talking to Raul last week, and it was just about, in your mission statement, consistency is one of the most things that you need to have to bring pride to your brand and your cigar. So if you ever get a bad batch, it's going to be your name on the line. You need to have that consistent taste, flavor, construction every single time. But if I get a Davidoff Chef's Edition, I want to enjoy every single second of that smoke. Oh, and uh, Russ. Russ, we're actually hold, doing... No, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, back up. <laughs> uh, I got programming notes. It's like, here we go. <laughs> Davidoff Chef's edition is not a home run. It's a grand slam. Yeah. To, to relate that to Thanks. baseball, yeah. That's a, I'll buy a box of 10 of those. I would put the oh. Colorado Claro from Davidoff in that same vein where I you buy those in boxes of 10, and that's not your home run. That's your grand slam, right? Mm. And you think about it, if you follow baseball, which many yeah. of us do in cigars, yeah, yeah. right? Your Grand Slam doesn't happen every day, every game, no, right? No, you don't it's want your it speci- to. It's your special cigar. Yeah, and totally, uh, Russ hit on a, a cigar there that's totally Grand Slam. Actually, uh, we're we're actually in the process um, programming notes. You want to stay tuned to Story Geeks mid September. They're releasing the Chef's Edition. For the Chef's year. Edition is like yeah, but uh, they're coming on the show. <laughs> They're actually they're actually coming on the show, and we're going to be doing a uh, couple of chefs via Skype to get. It's their right up there with yeah. with the Colorado Claro. Yeah, it's yeah. some of the best cigars. Mm-hmm. It, well, okay, so let's talk about price point, right? Like price point <laughs> for Davidoff. Okay, everybody, hold on to the seats. Here we go. <laughs> you talk about spending thirty dollars on one cigar, Pedro, like Chef's Edition and Colorado Claro. Little, color color is a little less than the thirty dollars. I'd pay that all day long to have a box of ten, that probably lasts me one to two years, right? Wow. Then you talk about the next tier up from Davidoff, dude, which is fifty dollars plus a cigar. I would totally. There are cigars in Davidoff's profile that I would keep. I'd smoke those once every six months, once every year. Wow. Yeah, and I keep. Dude, you can't afford to smoke those every day. No, gosh, fifty dollars no. a day is a lot of friggin' money, right? Yeah, like well, I, that, that's five good sticks, isn't it? No, it or even more, right? Yeah. It's ten or twenty good yeah, sticks, you know, yeah. that we've got on closeout. So I want to talk about uh, transitioning from the high end six to uh, ones that are value. This room one hundred one, Joe, do you smoke this? Yeah, the Connecticut room one hundred one, Connecticut six fifteen C. I want to say it's a. Toro size cigar. Yes, I don't know what the blend in, in profile is, but <laughs> awesome, yeah, awesome. And we got these on closeout uh, for around three dollars a stick. Russ, have you smoked the Room One Hundred One Connecticut recently? These came out in like I want to say two thousand fourteen or fifteen or something. Yeah, when I was in um, East Providence, I ended up picking up one of those, and you know it. Love one-on-one brand because it's just creative, but at the same time, I'm a Connecticut smoker by trade, and I thought it had great flavor all the way through, and, you know, Room 101 just never fails me, so I am always just relying and standing behind that brand with great taste. I smoked one of those this morning, and 
I was really impressed with the way it paired with coffee, and it was on point, right? What kind of coffee? Um, Black Rifle Coffee. Mm. They don't sponsor the show. They don't, but they should. Uh, a percentage <laughs> of their proceeds go yeah. to veterans oh, uh, to, nice. to support that, and they make coffee now, and I'm like, yeah, I'm all in. We have a, subscrip- a subscription to them, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a all in. The box turned up today, actually. I got very it excited. Did, yeah. It, it's it, a it's house awesome coffee, coffee yeah. right? Yeah. But I have to say that if you search hard at the same price point, you can find that EP Carrillo New Wave Reserva in the Toro format. I bought two bundles at the same price point. I got these Room 101s and many other Connecticut's. That EP Carrillo New Wave Reserva in the Toro size is my favorite Connecticut to smoke. It, the complexity, the flavor profile, the sweetness that works its way throughout the stick, like from the beginning, middle to the end, it is on point. Again, you can find it. Uh, I bought, uh, I, and again, there's some contentious points about you know brick and mortar versus online versus what's on sale. I found, I bought two bundles of these EP Carrillos for three dollars and sixty cents a piece, and they're my favorite cigars to smoke in the morning. Like if I took all the other Connecticut's out of my humidor and I only had that to smoke, I would not be disappointed. That's how good wow. this cigar is with coffee in That's the morning a because it fires on all cylinders throughout the entire cigar. And Joe, you've smoked these, right? Like oh, I've yeah, had these yeah. for years, like. Yeah. And Russ, I'm sure you've smoked these too, right? Like, this to me is the best cigar to have in the morning with coffee. E.P. Carrillo does not necessarily endorse the show. They support us. Uh, Ernesto came on the show. It was one of my favorite interviews that we've ever done on the show in the past. That cigar is just awesome. Russ, are you feeling that as well? What's your views on this? Okay. I was going to leave you on a cliffhanger, but... Many years ago, well, two probably, I had the Connecticut New Wave Reserva. It is part of my steady rotation. There you go. It is probably one of the best Connecticut's yep. I've ever smoked. Yep. And I got to say, he's right. It With coffee in the morning, it is the best. I woke up at 8 o'clock so I could get to the cigar shop at 8.30 just to keep buying them out. Wow. Are you drinking that coffee black? On, yeah. On, like, like, yeah. Coffee, coffee black. black. Uh, we've been doing the show for how many years, right? Like, this is my go-to. And, and it's not it's not a self-serving thing. It's not like I'm trying to support someone for some other motive. Like, no, I can see this, the feeling. Dude, like, this is, my, feeling. this is my go-to. Like, I've smoked probably 50 other Connecticut's in the morning, and I've chosen this one. Like, if I only had one cigar to ever smoke in the morning or afternoon with coffee. Wow. Do like this would be this. I it, it, put it this way I bought two, not one, but two bundles of this cigar to have in my humidor. And not only that, I put them in the F off section of my humidor. Yeah, you did. Not because <laughs> like it's something I can't get, but because of the experience of like, I want all two bundles for myself to have every morning with coffee. Did to, you to, to did, get my day so, going in the so morning? So you gave me a box and you took me the whole way through the humidor and we talked about flavor profiles. Is that one of the ones that I'm I've got currently sitting in my box? Probably not. I think I gave you one. <laughs> I think I, I gave did. you one. one. No, I think you did. In all seriousness, you I was looked like, very Aaron, excited. Like, you looked very. Like, if you can get these, like ah, uh, because I remember talking about the price point and yeah. I was like, why are they in the? Fu- F off section. That's it's my like, bad. Because, yeah. dude, like, <laughs> I'd like to smoke them that much where I don't want everyone else smoking yeah. them taken away and it, from. We can buy our own, Joe, can't we? We can buy our own. I To put it this way, <laughs> poo poo all you. I, I get the, the the whole, you know, like kind of um, uh, politics behind online cigars versus brick yeah, and I, mortar. Yeah, I get that as well. Dude, look, I've bought from brick and mortar, I've brought from online. Like, it doesn't matter. I've bought them a box at a time and bought them two bundles at a time because I like to smoke them. And I've I've done this show for a number of years now and I've never found another cigar that's a morning smoke that I like to smoke as much. I have to say that um, for our Stoke Geese listeners, you've heard me talk about um, uh, Steve Saka uh, in, in his cigar, the Mikarita, yeah. in the Toro size. When 
I'm not smoking a morning smoke. Like Steve makes the smoke that I smoke every other part of the time. And it, it, it's ironic, I think, maybe telling that it's also in the Toro size. I think I gave you one of those too, yeah. Aaron, to be like, yeah, yeah. dude, like I've smoked thousands of cigars since 2009 when we started this show. And if I had to pick two back. cigars, and, and again, it has nothing to do with if they support us or not, or my relationship with them. And just so happens that I have a great relationship with Steve and Ernesto. Like I respect them and I respect everyone's cigars, but like they make cigars that I like to smoke. I'm like, these are the one. And, and that's also caveat may not be what you like to smoke yeah. either. But if you're asking for my recommendation, like every day I would wake up, I'd smoke an Ipicarillo, New Wave Reserve, a Toro in the morning. And then in the afternoon after I ate lunch or after dinner, I would smoke Steve's Mi Carrillo Toro. Like that's, I would choose that every, every, as my everyday smoking cigar, limited, really expensive cigars aside, that's what I choose. And Joe and I spoke about this when we were in the humidor at Regency. It's like Paul has his flavors that he likes mm -hmm. and you have your flavors. Yeah. And it crosses over quite a lot, but mm -hmm. there is cigars on either end of the spectrum mm -hmm. that wouldn't be your go-to cigar that is Paul's right. go-to cigar. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I think me being a real rookie cigar smoker, it's like my flavor profiles are completely different. But your passion in talking about that, it's like... Um, it. It makes me want to go out and smoke what, it What's interesting, after though, is like, I, yeah, so I love the cigar we're smoking now, the uh, <coughs> St. Cristobal cigar. de la Habana La Punta, cigar. right? Like, sure, I could smoke this Punta. every day. La Punta. Punta. All right. La Punta. Sorry, we don't want to get that wrong. Right? We yes. don't want to get that wrong. <laughs> sure, I could smoke this every day, right? Yes. It's Cuban. They are embarked here in the U.S. Partially. Right? Partially. Partially. Depends on how you get them. If I was a media journalist and I want to, and it again, depends on who is president of the United States that is setting the rules and regulations and guidelines and laws about who can go to Cuba. And that's changed over time. That aside, sure. I could go to Cuba. I could get these cigars, right? I like to find for certain situations, like what's regular production that I can buy legally in the United States, even at a discount, that I would smoke every day. I think there's something telling about that. That's not to say that the other things that I'm smoking or have access to, or maybe I bend a little bit because I'm a hacker. I bend some of the laws to, to get that I like to smoke. Those are all awesome cigars. However, when I come down to it, what's the easiest legal regularly available i can get them in my brick and mortar i can get them online i can get them on sale I at see my you. online shop i can get them on sale in my brick and mortar i can have these all the time in my humidor and they're on par with everything else i've smoked that's what i've chose i think that's a very important distinction to make now these cuban cigars like do it yeah i totally smoke these every day right but you know, I got to kind of bend and twist and social engineer to get these cigars, certainly. Yeah. To, to, you know, so that, that that's kind of an indication to our audience, right? Like if you're recommending like what you want to smoke on an everyday basis. They have to be accessible. They have to, to be audience. accessible yeah. to where Oh, yeah. That's what very you're important. Yeah. Yep. But th there is there there is the unaccessible side. Right. Sure. Uh, and I feel like uh, not Joe, just Cubans, but limited too. Right. In general, just accessible. Um, I, I, I feel Joe Hollywood here and you, Paul, are definitely you follow the rules. Right. Um, most Ru of the time. Right. Most of the time. Russ uh, yeah, seems I mean like uh, he's willing to actually go out there. And we know that our friend from uh, Kuwait. Yeah, Kuwait, Aaron is Aaron operating is way out a there. Totally different set of rules than right. we are. Sure. So, so, so maybe it, it's there. There's an experience to be had that is outside of the, these rules. Um, cigar smoking shouldn't be necessarily rule, right? It, it's there is uh, it, it's tobacco. It's a plant. There should not be regulations around premium tobacco. So that's the way I put myself in that camp. I'll go on a limb and say, I, I agree with that. It, it should not be regulated. So it is. 
And unfortunately, we live in a place that it is, uh, as opposed to Aaron. It, well, we, then and, we can get into the conversation as to how, how regulated is that industry, right? Like there could right. be a whole, an entire new show. About, yeah, but let, let, yeah, let's, sure. let, let's talk about enjoyment as opposed to what the actual rules are that prevents us from. And um, it, it's, it, it, it is a time that we can actually fly to a bunch of these places, right? And you can actually meet the actual people that craft these sticks. And therefore, um, we, we're, we're in a time and place that uh, finally we can be the adults that we intend to be as opposed to experiencing these laws. And... <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe it is time that we actually experience some of the cigars that, um, are not necessarily accessible to people in this state. Uh, Russ. Oh. Oops. Aaron, Joe, Peter, closing thoughts? Because we, we've gone really long in this. <laughs> it's tequila. We have a lot of tequila. It's making us happy. We're right. just ranting on Russ, this show. Russ, give us your closing thoughts. One of the most epic shows ever in So Geek's history. <laughs> Taking you us back to our roots where we're Hold wasted on. talking about cigars. Hold on. Russ, give us your closing thoughts. Aaron's got a plane to catch. <laughs> I'm going to eat some pizza. Game regulation. You want to try to do that? You can't. I mean, if you're going to show stuff on MTV like... Okay, here's kids underage drinking, and they're all supposed to be 15, but then you're just going to shut down free enterprise and free businesses trying to earn a living through boutique cigars and giving me the beautiful blank blends that we have today? you got to vote it down. You can't legalize weed on one hand and then try to restrict cigars on the other. So besides that, yep. uh, RIP Nat, I'm kidding. I'll get, kick it back to you guys. Okay, so we're not going to touch any of those topics with a 10-foot pole, Russ. <laughs> Maybe after the show we'll have those conversations, but um, I, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of uh, things on the table right now in terms of uh, tobacco regulations and other regulations, and I think that, um, well, anyway. Joe, Aaron, Back Pedro, to what we were thoughts. smoking today? Well, excuse me? Back to what we were smoking today. Well, back to what we're smoking. I think the story in the legal leak. Cuban cigar. <laughs> I yes, think the thank you. Thanks, Pedro, for that. <laughs> I think that. Yeah, think but the they st- were imported correctly. <laughs> this yes. has been your stories of the week section. Um, I think that you know we 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 it, like everything else. It's a continuing conversation. Yep. Um, you know, I want to thank you for for the the knowledge. I want to thank you for the tequila. Thanks for the tequila. <laughs> thank you for the tequila. I Aaron, think we should salute. cheers. Man. Aaron has got to go cheers. catch the Chicago Cubs. Cheers. Aaron has got to go catch the Chicago <laughs> the, 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 the Chicago Chicago Cubs yeah, game. Yeah, so I put a Chicago <laughs> Which Cubs is game cheaper together. than Aaron's Yankees going. Red Sox. So, so, so let's get this straight, right? Aaron is going to hop on a jet plane tonight in like 45 minutes, go to Chicago, see a Cubs game, and it's cheaper than Yankees, Red Sox. Tequila. What are you smoking out there? <laughs> have a tequila. I have no idea if I can smoke out Russ. there. I don't know what the interstate regulations no, Chicago, are. Pretty much nowhere. Can, can I smoke in Wrigley Field? No. No, you no. can't smoke anywhere. 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 Drinking? You can't smoke anywhere. Drinking? Chicago. It's a sin. Uh, you, you can, can drink. drink you can't smoke. Okay. Oh, there you okay. go. Russ, thank you for your time. I Russ, will thank talk you. to you. Russ, it's a pleasure. Later it's on. good to see you again. Pedro, thank you for thank showing you. up. Thank you very much. Pedro, Pedro thanks thank for you. bringing the tequila. Oh, thank you. Thank Aaron, you for your comments. No, thanks for having thank me you. again. I love everyone. Thanks for having me. Paul loves everyone. We're going to have a big love in. We've got 45 minutes, and let's go.